greeting. So uh, this is going to be a, a video uh, it's on the back today of it's uh, Sunday the 10th of November 2019. Um, now as a believer, a born again Christian, uh, not a denominational, I'm just a child of God that's been saved by the grace and merit and the the holiness and righteousness of Jesus Christ and through simply believing in faith calling upon him seeking him with my heart and my own understanding which appropriated his atonement so I'm, like the word of God says neither Jew nor Gentile one in Christ Jesus because of him because solely because of his, his love and uh, growing up as a believer I had no had absolutely no idea about religion, about all the differences of opinion, all the different traditions that are rooted, all the apostasy. I, I, I basically started my Christian walk as a blank sheet, and I was pretty much <laughs> pretty much a blank sheet before the Lord started started His uh, marvelous work in my life. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, before I was saved, I was, I was a very poorly person. Uh, suffered with trauma-based injury, which was concealed, and I wasn't aware that I'd been through it. So I had a very naive, very immature, very foolish, and plagued with all the sins, that uh, vain imagining, pride, up and down like a yo-yo, humbled one minute, um, almost like bipolar, uh, delusional the next, so I was very unstable, so it was only the Lord that was able to ground me and stabilise my life and begin to teach me. Uh, so this really is a lesson on trust, it, it, on the back. Now I um, fell into Mormonism and apostasy and that severely ch I was severely chast chastised for that, praise God. And only the Lord, in His mercy and grace, and by the Holy Word, by the King James Bible, delivered me from my ignorance and my naivety, and started to place me and ground me on the rock that He placed me on when I'd first believed, and uh, corrected all those um, sins and transgressions that had crept into my life as a non-believer non and excuse me I've had a cucumber sandwich it repeats on me and even after I, I believed those things still remained in my life um, and say so the Lord helped me repent of those his work in his chastising his correction his merciful correction it's, it was never um, it's always a blessing to be taught by and corrected by the Lord. It was not a, what was painful was not not having the understanding and it's, um, and this is going to convey in the scriptures I'm going to share which is the book of Job. But this was on the back of um, a, a, a talk to, um, a a Sunday service, a, pre a preaching service by ex-Catholics for Christ by uh, James Battelle, which is a ministry I've uh, came across seeking, seeking, um, a, you know, somewhere to gather on a Sunday because I'm a, uh, just a, on my own and uh, like a house church, and uh, like the Word of God says, you need to, uh, you know, look two or three to gather to gather often. So thank the Lord, I, I discovered ex-Catholics for Christ, and I could uh, gather on a Sunday because they do an online um, communal service, remembering the uh, precious blood of the Lord and the empty cross, and to, they break bread. And uh, James preaches the teaches the Word of God, which is a, which has been um, a wonderful blessing in my life. So. If you're if you're like me, you're um, uh, looking for teaching. I would I would 
encourage you to uh, go to Ex Catholics for Christ on the Sunday at 11 o'clock, 10 or 11 o'clock, and uh, gather with them in, in spirit, And because uh, we're all in the spirit of the Lord. We, even if you're on your own, you're still a member of the church. You, you only need to read the scriptures to have fellowship with, with the Lord. The Lord's granted a spiritual fellowship in the true spirit of ecumenism. We're, we're one, one in spirit wherever we are in the world, whether it doesn't matter what we... You know, the Western world doesn't dominate Christianity. There's Christianities all, all over the world have brothers and sisters in all sorts of strange countries, strange to us, but not strange to the Lord. And so that's one place uh, it's been a great blessing to gather, to gather online, not, not to gather in, in, in physical sense, but to gather in spirit and to uh, hear the word of God taught. And James has given a, uh, a lesson, he's taught, teaching um, Exodus, the book of Exodus, and um, discovering the, the question, um, he said um, Exodus 31 it was today's uh, teaching, so I'm not going to cover the whole, the whole lesson, but it basically raised a question which reminded me of something, and, and I think my, my heart and spirit jumped in heaven. And I remember an experience, and this is a lesson that uh, that I've learned: is not to trust what, what what other preachers say, and what, but to measure by the word of God. And I remember read, studying the book of Job and uh, learning something, and then having a a comment made about something I said, and it kind of knocked me flat because I wasn't that grounded in the word and. It, it sort of changed my opinion, but it shouldn't have. And uh, so, hearing the lesson today kind of justified what I'd already, what I believed was right in a sense. So I thought I'd give that some further study and um, see what um, I could share. So I've prayed, and I um, what what the uh, the revelation was, or the the preaching was was about could Old Testament saints be born again because it was um, like I say I was a blank sheet I didn't know about all the different opinions of different um, min what ministers teach here and there and even from Bible studies I had no no history no knowledge of these things so I was completely innocent in, in that sense naive so I've since learned basically what's against the truth, but I, I always started with the um, being baptised into Christ, having the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit teaching me from the Word of God. And uh, certain things made me question what, what I'd been taught by the Lord. And I put my, like uh, it says in Colossians 2 that you're, or Ephesians 2 you're tossed around with every wind of doctrine and that's exactly what I was because I wasn't confident and established in, in my studies so as the Lord built me up through my testimony and time I was able to put my trust more in the word of God over the over the opinions of men so that's a lesson that um, it's ongoing with me it's a permanent lesson of my Christian faith so uh, thank the Lord for his mercies and patience and long suffering with people like um, myself who, who find learning difficult and who have struggled but the Lord is able to, is graciously can make up the difference to any, any size, any person and praise the Lord for that. But the day's lesson was um, can an Old Testament saint be um, born again in the sense, in the pre, pre-Christ pre sense, in the pre-cross sense. Now given this some thought, and I've reasoned this through, this is my opinion, that it was commonly taught apparently that um, from Bible commentaries and uh, dictionaries and uh, uh, study guides that um, the Jews couldn't be justified 
like a born again Christian and permanently receives the uh, Holy Spirit of God. But I think the scriptures do show that perhaps momentarily people were filled. It, the, the Holy Word definitely clarifies that uh, Old Testament saints had not only the sanctification, the covering of the grace of God, but they also had the filling, the indwelling Holy Spirit of the Lord. And that is clear in, as uh, James shared in Exodus 31, I think in Isaiah, Ezekiel 20 was another verse. I can't remember all the verses. But I'm, I'm going to share what I personally learned from Job, which I believe is the... Now Job, I believe, is the pre the um, Mosaic law. Uh, possibly post the Abrahamic covenant. I'm not sure. Possibly even before that time. It doesn't. There's no clear um, record of when Job or Job was um, on the earth when his life was in what period of history. And um, but it does show. I think it's a type of. The born again believer. Now, this is my testimony that um, Job clearly shows that uh, the book of Job clearly shows that uh, the change of heart, which I, I personally believe is a type of the regeneration of a, a Jew, a sanctified Jew, becoming a justified believer by the righteousness of God, by the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ, although they had no knowledge of it, they believed in the one, Jehovah was the word of God, which was, uh, the, is Jesus, the, the word of the Father, the, the second member of the uh, Godhead, and the authority, the messenger, the holy messenger sent to Moses with the full authority of the Father, who was known as, who revealed himself as Jehovah. But the uh, pre-Christian uh, church didn't know, didn't have the revelation of the um, Trinity, of the triune nature of Jehovah, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It was they, they, uh, the Jews believed there's only one God, so therefore Jesus couldn't have been God in the flesh because you know they don't believe that. But um, Job, I believe, the book of Job clearly shows the a type of the born again believer and also the justified Jews who were saved by believing in in, in the uh, trusting in God through faith. Habakkuk teaches the just shall live by faith. That's what the Jews teach, and what's that, that's what some Jews believe. So. Um, I nearly, I nearly jumped, I think I jumped off my seat in heaven and praise the Lord. I've, I've been re having a really hard time this week and coming up against the adversity and uh, doubts and the hammering of, uh, of the devil and the uh, devices of uh, wicked men. And uh, so this was a blessing to me to kind of justified what I'd, and a correction, but it justified what what the Lord had already shared, shared me. And I think this reveals that um, pre the Saviour, that um, even before the, the law of Moses, that uh, people who had faith in God, whether Jesus was um, uh, fulfilled his uh, crucifixion, his uh, atonement, is it shows that you, having faith in God and is is the same, truly and being humble, which is shows an example of here, in Job, the book of Job, that believing in God solely and and acknowledging your own sin, which is the uh, which is the um, conditions of repentance, which is humility. And, and being contrite and being uh, not putting yourself above God or or being raised up in your pride is to simply say, Lord, have mercy on my sinner, like like in the book of Luke, 
the justified sinner beats his chest and falls to the floor, looks looks to the floor, says, Lord, I, uh, sees his own sin, knows he can't keep the law of Moses, and says, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. In contrast to the righteous who do all the good works, believing that that's their righteousness, that their righteousness will save them. And that's pride, that's uh, arrogance and pride. And, and this is a type of Job, I believe. The uh, self-righteousness in man, but also a precursor to the, the uh, Abrahamic covenant of the Jews. But it wasn't their righteousness, it was God's righteousness in them. And so you've got the contrast between the, the faithful and the unfaithful within that, within that bracket. So I'm going to start with uh, reading from the scriptures just to show from the Word of God uh, these three, um, these qualities and the qualities of God, the righteousness of God and the, the failings of man. And there's an interesting scene in the book of Job which gives us a look into heaven when the angels were created. The son, it's called the sons of God, the angels and how Satan um, it comes into the presence of God and God speaks to Satan and uh, so I'm going to read in the uh, start of uh, chapter 1 and then later on it shows Job coming to the realisation because he was sanctified and God sanctified Job above all, all people and I believe that's a type of the Jew the sanctification and grace of God and, and giving them righteousness without um, as like a free gift but in that even though they're sinful in their hearts they're sanctified by the Lord's righteousness which they hold to and follow which is justifies God's righteousness but what Job, Job didn't realize it wasn't his righteousness it, it was a gift of God and it's a lesson of um, a lesson in Job's life. Um, so I start in chapter one. There was a man in the land of Uz. Now Job, translated Joab is J O A B. I think it's spelled in the Hebrew. Uh, it means actually persecuted and hated. So. Uh, start in verse 1 but I just wanted to give a definition of the, the meaning of his name there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and has showed evil and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters his substance also was seven thousand sheep three thousand camels five hundred yoke of oxen five hundred she asses a very great and a very great household so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east and his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all for Job, Job said it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts, thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. So we're getting a glimpse into the heavenly places here. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and, and from walking up and down in it, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? For there is none like him in, in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and, sh and sheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made a hedge about him? That's what I believe is referring to the sanctification. And about his house and about all that he have on every side, Thou hast blessed the work of his, hand, his hands, and his substance in increased in the land. So Satan very, knows very well that the Lord's protected Job with his sanctification. 
and Satan saying, well, has I not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he have on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thy hand now and touch all that he have and he will curse thee to thy face. So Satan's tempting the Lord to try Job. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he have is in thy power. Only upon himself put not thine, uh, thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So the Lord, for some reason, and, and which is manifest, has allowed Satan to go and buffet the, the man Job. And then to prove Satan wrong and to bring Job unto himself into the into the centre of the heart and mind and will of God. And there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the asses feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away, yeah, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and only I am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and have burned up the sheep. Now that's Satan, not God. And, and the servants, and consume them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell, a, fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his good mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Job has remained in his righteousness. Satan's been sent, done all this devastation to Job, and Job still bowed down and worshipped God. So he's still got he's still obtained his right the righteousness of God in his life. And the Lord have taken away, blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sin not, nor ch charge God foolishly. So there we see the, the trials beginning of Job's life. And uh, Job is further and further falls into the pit of curses, boils and afflictions and the criticism of his, all the people's opinion come in to counsel him. So I wanna, I'm not going to read the whole book of Job because it's, um, it goes on for 40 something chapters but I want to skip to chapter 32. Now after all the Job's friends are counselled Job and trying to even his wife said, why don't you just curse God and be done with it and struck down dead? Job refuses. But what Job's got a blinker in his eye, a blind spot, and it's something he's not considered. And then on the scene now appears this young, a young, a young person, Elihu. And he uh, comes, he, he's listening to all the friends and counsel that, that Job's been receiving. And there's, uh, so these three men, this is Job 32. So these, these friends are counselling Job and giving all their advice and opinions. And amongst them is this, this uh, young man called Elihu. Uh, verse 1, so these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes. <coughs> That's key. So he was considering the Lord's righteous, his righteousness as his own. This is Job's, um, Job's blind spot. Then was the king of the wrath of Elihu, the son of Barashel, the Buzzite, of the king, kindred of Ram, Against Job was his wrath kindled because he justified himself rather than God. 
Also against this, his three friends was his wrath king dog because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. So nobody really had the answer except this young man and he's held his tongue and now he's going to speak his heart. And I, I liken this a, 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 almost like a type of Christ, a type of the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit within, within a born again believer. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now Elihu had waited till Job had spoken because they were elder than he. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men that his wrath was kindled. And Elihu the son of Barashel the Buzai answered and said, I am young and ye are very old, wherefore I was afraid and does not show you mine opinion. I said, they should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Great men are not judged always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Therefore I said, hearken to me, I will also show mine opinion. Behold, I waited for your words, I gave ear to your reasons, while she searched out what to say. Yea, I tended unto you, and behold, there was none of you that convinced Job, or that answered his words, lest you should say, We have found out wisdom. God thrusted him down, not man. Now he hath not directed his words against me, neither will I answer him with your speeches. They were amazed. They answered no more. They left off speaking. When I had waited, for they spake not, but stood still, and answered no more. I said, I will answer also my part, I also will show mine opinion. I am full of matter, the spirit of in me constraineth me. Behold, my belly is of wine, which have no vent, it is ready to burst like new bottles. I will speak, that I may be refreshed, I will open my lips, and answer. Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattery, flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. Now, what I was slapped for by a, a so-called elder in the church or a minister, and I mentioned this, um, it was on a comment, I think, on uh, YouTube or something. And I mentioned that uh, this showed that um, this is like a born again man. He's humble, he's acknowledged that his righteousness is of God. He's even, he's even following the Proverbs. He's, wait, he's not rebuked the elders. He's waited, to, he's waited to hear the whole matter out before he answers. So he, he has discipline over over his uh, heart and mind and his lips so he waits patiently and then 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 he says my heart the spirit um, constrain me uh, the spirit of me constraineth me and behold my belly is as wine which have no vent it is ready to burst like new bottles so he's eager to share but he waits before before he opens his mouth, and I and I was sat down by that, and I kind of follow. Then I started following the opinions of men rather than what the Lord had revealed to me in in the Scripture. So it kind today it kind of justified the Lord in um, being right over what I trusted, and I think that was a lesson today given by James because I think he believed along the same lines as the people who've gone before to uh, share what the scriptures teach. And, they're not, and like it says, a why, uh, the, uh, uh, the wise aren't always right in their own, they're, they're sometimes right in their own eyes. But this man's very, this young man is very humble and uh, he gives God the glory and not, and not, not his own opinion. Uh, lest the Lord should uh, strike me. Um, where's the verse? Ah, oh, I, 
um, I can't find it, never mind. Anyway, so he carries on speaking. Oh, the last verse, for I know not to give flattering titles, in so doing my maker would soon take me away. So there, there it conveys this humility and the, the acknowledgement of the, the righteousness of God. Wherefore, Job, I pray thee, hear my speeches and hearken to all my words. Behold, now I have opened my mouth, my tongue hath spoken in my mouth. My word shall be of the uprightness of my heart, and my lips shall utter knowledge clearly. The Spirit of God hath made me, and the breath of the Almighty hath given me life. If thou can answer me, set thy words in order before me, stand up. Behold, I am according to thy wish, in God's stead. I am also informed out the clay. Behold, my terror shall not make thee afraid, neither shall my hand be heavy upon thee, so he's loving. Surely thou hast in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words, saying, I am clean without transgression. I am innocent, neither is there iniquity in me. Behold, he findeth occasion against me, he counteth me for his enemy. He putteth my feet in the stocks, he maketh all my paths. So Job is uh, accusing the Lord. Uh, but it's not it's not the Lord, it's the Job's transgression has allowed Satan to come and tempt him to show him that, that his righteousness was of God and not of himself. Behold it is this thou behold in this thou art not just. So Elihu's pointing out his his blind spot, his error. Behold in this thou art not just, justified. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he give not account of any of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumberings upon the bed. Then he opened the ears of men, and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw man from his purpose, and hide pride from man. He keep back his soul from the pit, and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed, and the multitude of his bones with strong pain, so that his life adoreth bread, and his soul dainty meat. His flesh is consumed away, that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, he, his soul draweth near unto the grave, and his life to destroyers. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto man, and saith, Deliver him from going into the pit. So he's clarified that as soon as somebody acknowledges that they are proud and that they're not righteous, then the Lord is gracious to deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. That's a type of Christ, that's a prophecy of Christ, I have found a ransom. So as soon as a person admits that their own unrighteousness and acknowledges the righteousness of God, I have found a ransom which justifies the believer. His flesh shall be fresher than a child, he shall return to the days of his youth, he shall pray unto God and he will be favourable unto him, and he shall see his face with joy, for he will rend unto man his righteousness. He looks upon men, and if any say I have sinned, and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Though all these things work if God often times with man, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will speak. If thou hast anything to say, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. Now, to me, it, it's uh, now this is pre the uh, the law of Moses, the justification. This is pre the cross justification. But here we have a justified man, and later on, a born again uh, Job, and that that's what I believe that he's just that that um, pre Christ men were justified through faith, as it says in Habakkuk. Now, whether that's a permanent justification, like permanently indwelling, but I don't see from the Word of God how it could be anything other than what, what it's stating. 
Uh, but trust in the word, the Lord's word, and not my opinion. But my opinion of the word is that um, Job was justified, as was this man. They were, in a sense, born again. They had the indwelling righteousness of God, as it clearly shows in Job 33. He would deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things work of God, oftentimes with man. So all throughout history, man, God, has been working out his salvation. And, uh, and, and the, 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 the requirements of that is a, hum, a contrite heart and a believing spirit in faith to, to acknowledge their own unrighteousness where God is then able to act. He's righteous to act because that's a just saying. To say that you're no good and you're a sinner and it doesn't profit me anything. That's like saying, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Like um, the prophet um, Ezekiel or Elijah, um, Isaiah. Lord, I am undone and I've seen the, the Lord of hosts and the angel comes and, and he kisses the coal and then that justifies him. That justifies him. So was Isaiah born again pre the cross? It looks like it. So I'm grateful to my brother today for sharing these things, to, to stir this up within me, to bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will speak. If, that, if thou hast anything to say, answer me, speak, for I desire to justify thee. If not, hearken unto me, hold thy peace, and I will teach thee wisdom. Chapter 34 Furthermore, Eli, Elihu answered and said, Hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, that ye, that ye may have knowledge. For the ear trieth words, as the mouth tasteth meat. Let us choose to us judgment. Let us know among ourselves what is good. For Job hath said, I am righteous, and God hath taken away my judgment. Should I lie against my right, my wound is incurable without transgression. So Job saying that, that, that he, he hasn't sinned. He has done no wrong. He hasn't transgressed. What man is like Job, who drinketh up scorning like water, which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity, and walketh with wicked men? For he hath said, It profited a man nothing that he should delight himself with God. So Job's having a, a right battle of his faith. He hasn't entered into that rest at this time. Therefore hearken unto me, ye men of understanding, far be it from God that he should do wickedness, and from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. For the work of a man shall be rendered unto him, and cause every man to find according to his ways. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly, neither will the Almighty pervert judgment, who have given him a charge over the earth, or who have disposed the whole world. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather in unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. If, if now thou hast understanding, hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. Shall even he that hateth right govern, and will thou condemn him that is most just? Is it fit to say to a king, thou art wicked, and to princes ye are ungodly? How much less to him than that accepted not the persons of princes, nor regarded the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. In a moment shall they die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. For the eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his doings. There is no darkness nor shadow of death, where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. For he will not lay upon man more than right, that he should enter into judgment with God. He shall break in pieces mighty men without number, and set others in their stead. Therefore he knoweth their works, and he overturned them in the night, so that they are destroyed. He striketh them as wicked men in the open sight of others, because they turned back from him, and would not consider any of his ways. So that they caused the cry of the poor to come upon him, and he heareth the cry of the afflicted. When he give quietness, who then can make trouble? And when he hideth his face, who can behold him? Whether, is there, whether it, it, it be done against the nation or against the man only, 
that the hypocrite reigneth reign not, lest the people be ensnared. Surely it is meet to be said unto God, I have borne chastisement, I will not offend any more. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. Should it be according to thy mind, he will recompense it, whether they refuse or whether thou choose. And not I, therefore speak thou what thou knowest. Let men of understanding tell me, and let a wise man hearken unto me. Jacob has spoken without knowledge, and his words were without wisdom. My desire is that Job may be tried unto the end because of his answers for wicked men. For he had if rebellion unto his sin, he clappeth his hands among us, and multiplies words against God. Chapter 35 Eli he spoke moreover and said, Thinkest thou this be right, that thou sayest, saidest, My righteousness is more than God's? For thou said, saidest, What advantage will it be unto thee, and what profit shall I have if I be cleansed from my sin? I will answer thee and thy companions with thee. Look unto the heavens and see, and behold the clouds which are higher than thou. If thou sinnest, what dost thou against him? Or if thy transgressions be multiplied, what do, do, doest thou unto him? If thou be righteous, what givest thou him? Or what receiveth him of thine hand? Thy wickedness may hurt a man, as thou art, and thy righteousness may profit the son of man. By reason of multitude of oppressions, they make the oppressed be cry, to cry. They cry out by reason of the arm of the mighty. But none saith, Where is God my Maker, who giveth songs in the night, who teacheth us more than the beasts of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowls of heaven? <coughs> there they cry, but none giveth answer, because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Although thou sayest thou shalt see, see him, yet judgment is before him, therefore trust thou in him. But now, because it is not so, he hath visited in his anger, yet he knoweth it not in great extremity. Therefore doth God open the mouth in vain, his, his mouth in vain, he multiplied words without knowledge. So Job's got a rebuke there for um, considering God's righteousness as his own, and then he started questioning, well, what, what profit is it for me to be righteous? Um, although Job was righteous in his actions, his only transgression was he didn't acknowledge the righteousness of God. Elihu also, this is chapter 36, Elihu also proceeded and said, Suffer me a little and I will show thee that I have yet to speak on God's behalf. I will fetch my knowledge from afar and will ascribe righteousness to my Maker. For truly my word shall not be false, he that is perfect in knowledge is with thee. Behold, God is mighty and despiseth not any, he is mighty in strength and wisdom. He preserveth not the life of the wicked, but giveth right to the poor. He withdraweth not his eyes from the righteous, but with kings are they on the throne. Yea, he doth establish them forever, and they are exalted. And if they be found in fetters, and be holding in cords of affliction, then he showeth them their work and their transgressions that they have exceeded. He opened also the ear to discipline, and commandeth that they return from iniquity. If they obey and serve him, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. But if they obey not, they shall be perished by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap upon wrath, they cry not when he bindeth them. They die in youth, and their life is among the unclean. He delivereth the poor in his affliction, and openeth their ears in oppression. Even so would he that he have removed thee out of the strait into a broad place, where there is no straightness, and that which should be set on thy table should be full of fatness. But thou hast fulfilled the judgment of the wicked, judgment and justice take hold on thee. Because there is wrath, beware, lest he take thee away with his stroke, and a great ransom cannot deliver thee. Will he esteem thy riches? No, not gold, nor all the forces of strength. 
desires not the night when people are cut off in their place. Take heed, regard not iniquity, for this has thou hast chosen rather than affliction. Behold, God exalteth by his power, who teacheth like him. Who have enjoyed him his way, enjoined him his way, or who can say thou hast wrought iniquity? Remember that thou magnify his work when which men behold. Every man may see it, man may behold it afar off. Behold, God is great, and we know him not. Neither can the number of the years be searched out, number of his years be searched out, for he maketh small the drops of water, they pour down rain according to the vapour thereof, which the clouds do drop and distil upon man abundantly. Also can any understand the spreadings of the clouds or the noise of his tab tabernacle, tab tabernacle? Behold, he spreadeth his light upon it and covereth the bottom of the sea. For by him then ju judgeth he the people, he give me in abundance. With clouds he covereth the light and commandeth it not to be shined by the cloud that cometh bet betwixt. The noise thereof showeth concerning it, the cattle concerning the vapour. 37. And this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear it attentively the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it un under the whole heaven and is lightning upon the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the, with the voice of his excellency and he will not stay then when his voice is heard. God thundereth marvellously with, with his voice. Great things doeth he which, cannot co which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and the cold out of the north. By the breath of God frost is given, by the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud and it is turned around about by his counsels, that they may do what he commandeth them upon the face of the world and the earth. He calls of it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for, for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Does thou know when God dispose them, and calls the light of his cloud to shine? Does thou know the balancings of the clouds, the wondrous works of him? which is perfect in knowledge. How thy garments are warm, when he quieteneth the earth by the south wind. Hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? Teach us what we shall say unto him, for we cannot order our speech by reason of darkness. Shall it be told him that I speak? If a man speaks, surely he shall be swallowed up. And now men see not the bright light, which is in the clouds, but the wind passeth and cleanseth them. Fair weather cometh out of the north, which God is, with God is terrible majesty. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. He is excellent in power and in judgment, and in plenty of justice he will not afflict. Men do therefore fear him, he respects not any that are wise of heart. So, then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, so this is following Elihu's uh, witness to Job. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that dark darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measures thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon all the foundations thereof fasteneth? Or who laid the corner stone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who shall shut up the sea with the doors, when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb? When I made the cloud, the dark garment thereof, and thick darkness a swaddling band for it, and break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, 
Hereover to you shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. It is turned as clay to the seal, and they stand as a garment. And from the wicked their light is withholden, and the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depth? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the doors of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare it, if thou knowest it all. There is a way where light dwelleth, and as for darkness, where is the place thereof? That thou should take it to the bound thereof, and that thou shouldest know the path to the house thereof. Knowest thou it, because thou wast then born, or because the number of thy days is great? Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow, or hast thou seen the treasures of the hail, which have I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? By what way is the light parted, which scattereth the east wind upon the earth? Who have divided a water course for the overflowing of waters, or a way for the lightning of thunder, to cause it to rain on the earth, where no man is, on the wilderness wherein there is no man? to satisfy the desolate and waste ground, to cause the bud out the tender herb to spring forth. Have the rain a father, or who have begotten the drops of dew? Out as whose wombs came the ice, and the hoary frost to heaven, who have gathered it? The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet in influences of Pleiades, or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Mazaroth in his season, or canst, canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? Canst thou not the dominion? Canst not? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Canst thou not up thy voice to the clouds that abundance of waters may cover thee? Canst thou not send lightnings that they may go and say unto thee, Here are we? Who have put wisdom in the inward parts, or who have given understanding to the heart? Who can number the clouds in wisdom, or who can stay the bottles of heaven? When the dust groweth into hardness, and the clods cleave fast together, wilt thou hunt the prey for the lion, or fill the appetite of the young lions? When, when they couch in their dens, and abide in, in the cupboard to lie in wait, who provide for the raven, his food, when his young ones cry, unto God they wonder for lack of meat. Knowest thou the time when the wild goats of the rock bring forth, or canst thou mark with the hinds of calf? Can thou number the mouths that they fulfil, or knowest thou the time that they bring forth? They bow themselves, they bring forth their young ones, they cast out their sorrows. Their young ones are in good liking, they grow up with, up with corn. They go forth and turn not unto them. Who have sent out the wild ass free? Who have loosed the bands of the wild ass? Whose house I have made the wilderness and the barren land his dwelling place. So it goes on. The Lord goes on and on throughout this. Asking Job, getting Job to consider, to reason. That uh, God is questioning Job of all these things. Um, just want to go back to something. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Now, was the Lord referring to Elihu here? Because he just disappears out of the equation. Or was the Lord referring to the three friends and Elihu is almost like an invisible type? I'm not sure. But anyway, the Lord proceeds to uh, question him even against uh, chapter 41. It runs through. Um, the Lord speaks 38, chapter 39, chapter 40. We'll start, I'll, I'll finish with chapter 40. So all the way through from 37, 38 and 39. The Lord challenges Job. 
Moreover, the Lord, in the chapter 40, more, and it conclu the Lord's concluding, asking him all the questions about nature, about anything. Uh, where were you when the, the uh, sons of the morning were shouted for joy? Let's find that scripture. Um, I can find that quickly. Anyway, I'll, I'll just um, finish off because I don't want to read, go into hours. Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reprove God, let him answer it. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I, I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind, and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man, and I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me, that thou mayest be righteous? Has thou an arm like God, or can thou, can thou thunder with a voice like him? Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency, and array thyself with glory and beauty. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud, and abase him. Look on every one that is proud, and bring him low, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Behold now, be him off which I made with thee. He eateth grass as an ox. Thou now, his strength is in his loins, and his force is in the navel of his belly. He moveth his tail like a cedar. The sinews of his stones are wrapped together. His bones are as strong pieces of brass. His bones are like bars of iron. He is the chief of the ways of God. He that made him can make his sword to approach unto him. Surely the mountains bring him forth food where all the beasts of the field play. He lieth under the shady trees and the cover of the reed and fens. The shady trees cover him with their shadows. Shadow, the willows of the brook can pass about him. Behold, he drinketh up a river and hasteneth not. He trusteth that he can draw up Jordan in his mouth. He taketh it with the eyes, his nose piercing through snares. Um, 41 also, the Lord's uh, revealing the, his righteousness in, within man, once man humbles himself. And it proceeds all the way through to 42, and Job replies. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know I'd encourage people to study the book of Job, all those chapters. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can, canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I will speak and I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by, by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I adore myself, and repent in dust and ashes. And it was so, that after the Lord had spoken these words unto Job, the Lord said unto Eli, Eliphaz the Temanite, Temanite, My wrath is kindled against thee, and against thy two friends. For he have not spoken of me the thing that is right, as my servant Job have. Therefore take unto you now seven bullets, seven rams, and go to my servant Job, and offer up for yourselves a burnt offering, and my servant Job shall pray for you, for him will I accept, lest I deal with you after your folly, in that ye have not spoken of me the thing which is right, like my servant Job. So the Lord's merciful there, but he's given Job the, uh, the pre-eminence because he's justified now. So Eliphaz and the Temite, the Temite 
and Bindad the Shu Shuhai, and so far the Namahai, Namahai went and did according as the Lord commanded them, and the Lord also accepted Job. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends, and also the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Then came there unto him all his brethren. Now is that the brethren that were killed? I don't know. Or the brethren that were remained. And all his sisters, and all they that had been of his acquaintance before, and he did eat bread with him in his house, and they bemoaned him, and comforted him, over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him. Every man also gave him a piece of money, and every one a nearing a gold. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had fourteen thousand sheep, six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she-asses. He had also seven sons and three daughters, and he called the name of the first Jemima, the name of the second Keziah, and the name of the third Kevin Hapak. And all in the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. After this, Job lived a hundred and forty years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died, being old and full of days. So there, there we have a type, I believe, of the sanctified believer, uh, the religious uh, crowd, um, in the three friends who. And and then the pre the pre type of Job before he was justified of the his sanctification, which was a gift from God, which I think is the type of the Jews. But once um, Elihu spoke, and then spoke uh, the Lord spoke after and confirmed what Elihu had spoken. Job humbled himself and he believed. He believed God. God's righteousness over his own and that justified him and the Lord restored him twice as much as he he, he was blessed before so f for me my testimony in my uh, young Christian days was that was a type of the sanctity the sanctification of the believer which I'd also experienced in my life and I've also experienced um, you know the being born again, the justification, knowing that the Lord, uh, that, that Jesus Christ is only the righteous, the only, the only good person, the only uh, way that God has provided for men to be justified. Um, and Job has acknowledged that, although that he had no knowledge of the Lord Jesus, he he, he still believed in God through faith. And he was humbled, and then I believe he was justified in his heart, which is um, a type of the uh, born again believer. And that was also revealed in um, what my brother was, uh, brother James, was talking about in in his um, study and teaching of Exodus chapter thirty one, and he mentioned. Uh, to to um, to build the tabernacle, and they were blessed with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in their hearts. And I'd encourage you to read that it's in the uh, um, Ex Catholics for Christ, uh, Exodus thirty one was, was the lesson today, and then it gives some other references that James shared. Um, in Isaiah and Ezekiel 20, I can't remember what verse, so without looking it up, I would struggle without, unless I read the whole chapter, where, where those references were. So that to me clarifies what I believe but was put off by someone else's opinion. So that's what I wanted to share. I was uh, rather blessed today to hear that. So thanks to the Lord, thanks to James, thanks to ex-Catholics, James and Patrick Patel. And I just wanted to share those thoughts with uh, anyone listening. And uh, I'm going to close there in the name, precious holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen.